Hello, everyone, and welcome to our 14th Nashville Tug virtual meeting. We're joined by our Tableau user group leadership team and several guest speakers. We're glad you're here. We hope you have a great time. First up, we have our community conversation with Sarah Bartlett. Perhaps you've heard of her. She's kind of a big deal with Tableau. We're super proud to have her here. And let's hear about Iron Quest. Sarah? Am I up now? Okay, great. Let me just share my screen. Hopefully you can see that okay. Yep. Yep, yeah. okay, awesome. Hi everyone, um, thank you for joining us today. So today I'm going to talk about Iron Quest um, and specifically lessons from I that I've learned from Iron Quest that can help you potentially succeed at Iron Viz. Now I appreciate it's a bit late in the day uh, to be talking about Iron Viz. Uh, the deadline is this Friday, but these tips can be applied to um, any personal projects, um, not necessarily just Iron Viz. Um, so thank you for the intro, Nick. Um, a little bit about me. I'm a senior consultant at Slalom in London. I'm a Tableau Zen master, a Tableau social ambassador. And back in 2018, I founded a project called Iron Quest, which I'll tell you all about. Um, so before I go any further, you might be wondering, you know, what is Iron Viz? Not heard of this thing. Um, so Iron Viz is the ultimate data viz contest that Tableau runs. It's an annual contest. So every year there's a, a global competition. Um, and there's also a European competition, or at least pre-COVID there was. Um, and back in 2018, I entered Iron Viz um, just, just as, as something to do really, really to test my skills. Um, and that was Iron Viz Europe. And I made it into the final. Uh, this is me. Um, in the final on stage in London uh, and the, during the final of Iron Viz the requirement is you work with three other contestants and you each build a visualization in 20 minutes using the same data set so it's it's run like a game show it's super high pressured um, but it's a lot of fun um, and I, I really thoroughly enjoyed the experience. Now this year um, the, what Iron Viz looks like is there's two stages so you, you've got the feeder part of the contest which is where Tableau announce a topic uh, and you go away and visualize that topic and then get your viz in uh, and so in that case it's due in by July the 2nd um, and then the top three scoring visualizations then proceed to the live final in November uh, which looks something like the one I just showed you but I think this year it will be run virtually uh, but essentially in the live final each contestant will have the same data set and they'll be asked to build something in 20 minutes live. Um, now this year there's some really great prizes in place so the first prize, the person that wins on, on in the final, wins $10,000 plus the $5,000 donation to a nonprofit of their choice. And there's other cash prizes for the other places. Uh, plus um, those registrants get free, um, just, what, those, those winners get free registration to Tableau Conference 2022. I know my slide says 2021, but it should be 2022. Um, so appreciate there's not much time to get involved. But if you do, if you're feeling confident, um, or if maybe you're working for a visualization at the moment, the topic this year is data plus joy. So it's essentially saying just visualize something that brings you joy. So it's a really broad, open topic. And the emphasis is really on visualizing something that makes you happy. Now, back in 2018, um, after I did Iron Viz, uh, like in the final, I was thinking, you know, what wouldn't it be great if you could practice for Iron Viz throughout the year? Um, back then, there was projects like Make of a Monday and Workout Wednesday and Project Health Viz that you're probably familiar with. Um, but most of them are either weekly or monthly, um, and they focus very much on visualizing a data set that's been prepared and cleaned for you. So all you have to do is go away and quickly build something. Um, there's not a visualization project as such that, or well, there wasn't at least, that provided data, that didn't provide any data where you had to go and source your own data and then build something um, more broadly. Um, and that's why I founded the project called IronQuest. So IronQuest um, is modeled upon the IronViz feeder competitions. Um, and every month we look at these visualizations and we, we look at them and give feedback based on the IronViz scoring criteria, which is design, storytelling and analysis. Um, and then every month participants submit visits centered around a different topic um, and then all entries are shared in a wrap up blog post that I put together. 
Uh, and the mission for Iron Quest really was to create a safe space for practice, uh, to provide diverse topics for people to viz. Um, in the last 12 months, we visualized everything from uh, passion projects, which funny enough is very similar to the Iron Viz Feeder um, the theme this year. Uh, we visualized um, diversity and entertainment. We've also done more projects centered around uh, design. So maybe designing in black and white is one of them. We did a round which focused on designing for mobile. So really centering in your skills on a particular topic or particular uh, design technique. Um, every month I provide feedback uh, to help people grow and, and improve their skills. And with that, I collaborate with somebody else in the community to provide feedback together with them. So always get other experts on, on those calls. Um, through just promoting the work uh, using the hashtag and um, just sharing your work online it re can really help you reach new audiences so perhaps you want to attract more people um, to your portfolio and Tableau Public or just make more people aware of your work and Iron Quest is a great way to do that and um, every month people will learn and have fun and it's really great to see the diversity of entries that we receive and um, I'm always blown away by, by what people do um, and ultimately this contest or this this project can help you prepare for iron viz but that's not necessarily why you need to enter you can enter iron quest and have no intention of ever doing iron viz and um, just uh, quickly the iron quest cycle uh, the way it works is we typically announce a topic at the beginning of the month and then uh, participants go away and source their own data on that topic so it's up to them to find data uh, maybe one data source or bring multiple data sources together we've even done a quantified self round before where people actually use their own data uh, and then you using that data you build a viz and then share it on, on social media or not, if it's up to you. Um, and then you can submit the viz on a form and on that form, you then request feedback. And if you request feedback, we'll then go through those entries and provide feedback to those which are shared via a YouTube video. So to date, um, we've had, this is, so this is since the beginning of 2018, we've received 509 entries to IronQuest via 16 challenges. And that's from 293 participants and 38 of those visualizations have been featured as visualization of the day. So Viz of the day, something that Tableau Public run. Um, the, the, the examples that you see there on the screen, they're from our quantified self round, which was back around about a year ago. So at the beginning of the pandemic. So moving on to the lessons that we've learned. So hopefully you can take some of these and then apply them in your own work, whether that be Iron Viz, Iron Quest or any personal projects. Um, but when we're embarking on new visualization projects, there's often a number of decisions that we need to make and hurdles we need to overcome. So I want to talk through some of these today. So the first one, funny enough, is Viz What You Love. And this plays brilliantly into uh, the topic this you see this year for, for Iron Viz. Um, but when you're considering what to visualize, try and pick a topic that you're passionate about um, and enjoy. I'd say it's far easier to put the work in, undertake research, collect data, and build a compelling visualization when it's focused on a topic that you're passionate about. Um, for example, if I'm unlikely to pick a topic, say on a show I've never watched on Netflix, for instance, and put in effort to, to research that topic, if it's, if it's something I'm not really interested in. Um, but you'll find if it's something that you're really passionate about, it's, it's much more enjoyable and you're much more likely to take the time out to actually work on it. So throughout your this talk you'll see some examples of visualizations that have been entered for iron quest so this first one here is by mark corbridge um, and this was for our uh, i think it was uh, myths mystery and magic round maybe um but the focus here was he was looking at buffy the vampire slayer which is a show that he loves and he did a lot of research uh, by watching the programs and using online resources to find out how many baddies buffy had fought um, and then put it together in this amazing visualization. And I think this is a great example of Viz What You Love because it really, his love for the show really shines through and you can see that he's got a deeper knowledge of characters. Um, and I thought this was particularly cool. Um, another example from our most recent round here is by Autumn Batani. Uh, and this one looks at the film and television career of Regina King. So Autumn's a big fan of Regina and um, so she decided to look at her career over time and all the drawings that you see on this viz are actually drawn by Autumn as well which I think is incredible. Next up is um, my suggestion would be to build your own data sets. So when I was entering IronViz I spent ages probably like three weeks trying to search for a data set for the topic that was European cities um, and I just got nowhere I was googling googling and I, I was trying to find 
in my head what I thought was the perfect data set. Now, since then, I'm convinced the perfect data set doesn't exist uh, and you're far better off building your own, whether that's pulling together multiple data sets from different sources or even using your own data. So maybe collecting some data on yourself, uh, things like maybe your Fitbit data or, um, or things like that. And here's some examples of where people have done that. So in this viz by Adam Green, uh, he this is for our black and white round. He decided to look at his visits on Tableau Public and categorize them based on the background color that they had. So whether it was black, white or something else, he wanted to see if there was any patterns in, in his design. Um, and I just love the way that he presented this. I thought it was really cool. Um, and then in this viz here by Judith Becker, which again was for our, was for our quantified self round, uh, which was, I think, the beginning of the pandemic around April last year, um, she decided to look at um, her spending habits and how they'd changed since she'd gone into quarantine. Um, so what was she spending her money on and how those patterns had changed? And I thought this was really interesting and it was something that I'm sure a lot of people could relate to. My next tip is to understand your why. So um, sometimes it can be difficult to tell a story and you, it may be difficult to pull that story together. So I think understanding your why is important. And so really, you know, what is the objective of your visualization? And I find that those objectives tend to fall into two categories. Either you want to build an exploratory viz, which like shares a finding, or perhaps you're curious about something and you want to do that data analysis to satisfy that curiosity. Or maybe you're on the other side where you want to do a decorative viz. So maybe you want to educate your audience or maybe convince them of something. Um, something that falls into this category would be maybe if you're doing a viz uh, about a good cause or for a nonprofit and you ultimately want the um, audience to then donate at the end. Um, I've got some examples here. So uh, in this one by Carrie Collins, he was looking at data relating to UFO sightings in the US and he found some unusual um, or unusual spike in the data, uh, which was I think it was in, um, in California. Um, there was a spike in sightings of UFOs at the end of 2015. Um, so he thought it was really strange. So dug into data a bit more, did some research and found out that I think the US um, there was a missile fired and, and people saw a, a flash of light across the sky, which explained the, the, the rise in UFO sightings. But rather than taking the entire data set and just plotting where all those UFO sightings were, he really focused in on a curiosity and, and just limited the data down um, to the sightings in that area and on that day. And I thought that was a really interesting approach. Um, and then in this viz by T, she, um, this is in contrast to Gary's, um, this is much more on the decorative side. So T starts by presenting data on the global rice industry, including which countries and regions pr uh, produce the most rice. And then she goes down uh, and drills into an area um, in Vietnam, um, specifically the Mekong Delta region. And look, they produce, uh, in that region, they produce 3% of the world's rice. But unfortunately, they've been struggling with periods of drought. There's, and that's due to dams further up the river. So then she explores the topic more um, and then gives the audience a button to press so they can find out more about the issues that, that are being experienced in that area and how people can help the people that live locally. Okay, sorry, I've just got some animation on there. Next up, it, my tip would be to provide context. So don't assume that everyone understands your topic, particularly if you're doing something that's quite niche. I, I think almost always your topic will need an introduction. Um, an example I've got here is by Lindsay Betsendahl. And this one was produced for the um, healthcare and prisons round that we did at the beginning of 2020. And um, so in this viz, Lindsay's looking at mental health, sorry, mental health of women in prison, and um, particularly women that are pregnant. Um, so she, rather than looking at all the data, she drills into a particular data point, which is a woman in Australia, and tries to tell her story uh, through that data point. Um, and then she brings her story to life by doing that. And then she brings it up a level and then looks at data regarding women who are pregnant in prison in the US and generally their experience. Um, so I think it's really powerful, you know, humanizing the data um, and trying to really drill it into one particular story. And another example I've got here is actually uh, from Christian Felix. Uh, and this was uh, his Ironvis feeder entry from Ironvis last year. And this got him a place in the final. And he 
ultimately went on to win the competition. Now, in this visualization, uh, Christian examines the influence of social capital on the spread of COVID-19 in the US. Um, social capital is not a topic that I was really familiar with before I saw this viz, but thankfully Christian provides a really clear introduction um, and everything is presented really clearly and really well. So even if you don't understand the topic to begin with, you can understand the visualization um, and the analysis that he's provided. I thought this was done really, really well, really great design. Um, and it's no wonder that he got a place in the final through this viz. And then that's it from the tips, but if you hopefully I've inspired you, if you want to enter Iron Quest, we'll be back up and running um, after this Iron Vis feeder finishes, so probably in mid July. Um, you can find out all the latest information about Iron Quest on my blog, which is sarahlovesdata.co.uk, or you can search the hashtag Iron Quest, um, and I'll be putting a new blog post out as soon as the uh, new contest is live. Now, if you do decide to enter Iron Viz, um, and if you decide to enter like based on my talk, you're incredibly ambitious, but it can be done. Um, but if you do decide to enter, or if you're maybe submitting your Viz later this week, just remember that you're entering for you and nobody else. This is all about you and improving your learning. Uh, don't compare yourself to others. Um, it's really not about that. I often say that um, I compare it to a marathon and most people don't enter a marathon to win. It's the taking part and the, the training and everything that goes into it. Um, and I think that's very similar to what IronViz is. Um, but by entering IronViz, chances are you're going to learn something new through building your visualization. Uh, hopefully you're going to have fun and I, and I hope you're going to challenge yourself. Um, and I've included a tweet here from Liam Spencer, which he tweeted last year after entering IronViz. And I think that sums it up really nicely. Um, and Tableau's tagline is, you win or you learn, you can't lose, which I think sums it up as well. So hopefully um, that sparked your interest in either IronViz or IronQuest. Um, and if you've got any questions, feel free to put them in the chat right now. Thank you. Virtual applause for, for Sarah. Thank you very much. I know that the quiet applause can be deafening, but you, you earned a lot with that and I appreciate it very much. I Thank learned you. a lot just with what you shared. Um, I took notes, I'm sure others did as well. Thanks. Uh, if you're following along in our agenda, let's see, I'm gonna, Sarah, would you mind ceasing your screen share? Yeah, sure. Thanks, no worries. If you're following along in our agenda, next up we have Mark Bradbourne, or as he says, Bradbourne, Bradbourne. I don't know. He he'll he can tell you. At any rate, he's going to tell us about the success and retrospective of his real world fake data. Um, I don't know about you, but this this is one I have particular interest in. I think there's a real opportunity here. So let's see and hear what Mark has to say. Mark. All right. Can you see the screen? Okay. Yes, sir. Awesome. All right. Well, um, yeah, so this is actually the first time I've talked about real world fake data. Um, it recently came to an end, or what I'm calling season one, uh, which may imply a season two. I don't know yet, but we'll, we'll walk through this and we'll see how it goes. Um, but appreciate the invite today. Uh, I'm glad to, to be here. And uh, so, yeah, that's me. Um, I founded and executed real world fake data. Uh, I'm a national solutions engineer at Tableau. Um, prior to joining Tableau, I was a social ambassador and I co-led the Cleveland Tug. Um, so yeah, and I'm a big fan of community projects. Uh, Iron Viz or Iron Quest, uh, Makeover Monday, Workout Wednesday. I uh, have dabbled in all of them. So I wanted to do my own. <clears throat> so um, what is real world fake data? So if you're not familiar, um, I was laying in bed at the end of last year and I was reflecting on my work day. And I had been asked if I knew of any examples on Tableau Public, because a lot of people uh, inside Tableau will come to me for community content because they know that I'm involved. Um, so they were looking, I think it was a call center dashboard they were looking for. And so after a quick search, I didn't really find much. Um, so I, I had a bit of an epiphany. And since Tableau Public is amazing, um, just for the sheer volume of visits, um, a lot that border on art uh, and learning, you know, that you can get like when you push your own boundaries. Um, but sometimes I was looking for something a little more practical. So real world fake data was born. Um, 
and the the purpose of it was really to drive real world examples um, and give people the opportunity to build out their portfolio on something that would be more like business specific. Um, you know, when you're interviewing, you know, it's nice to have a portfolio that has a lot of cool stuff. Um, but if you can say, hey, look, I've, you know, presented some, some you know, kind of real world situations here, um, it might be a differentiator. So that was kind of the whole premise. Um, <clears throat> so the idea was simple, or, <laughs> or so I thought. Um, you know, the reason you rarely see practical examples in the wild is because generally that data doesn't belong in public. Um, it's proprietary, it's sensitive, it could cost you your job if you decide to put it publicly. So I just decided to go to start a mission and find data sets from different industries or departments in companies. And then I would push those out into the world um, on some sort of standard cadence, give some feedback, and I would wash, rinse, and repeat that until, until I did all the data sets. Um, unfortunately, the searching was a bit fruitless in most cases. Um, so I wanted to keep things as simple as possible. And I didn't want to compete with any other community projects. Um, so I decided that the cadence would be like two weeks and then I would produce a new data set. So it was almost like a paycheck. So it was almost like a riff on, on work. Um, and then uh, after each data set, I'd write up a recap, provide some general feedback, pick a few favorites and um, you know, publicize it, Twitter, LinkedIn, um, and hope and pray that it did not fail miserably. Um, so the next challenge after I kind of knew what the cadence and the structure would be, um, I needed to figure out what the actual data sets would be. Um, and I'll get into that in a moment. Um, but I first started making a list of different industries and departments that might make sense to explore. Um, I ended up with 12, uh, and it was human resources, uh, banking and finance, which ended up being consumer complaint data for the U S, um, insurance call center, help desk, social media, which was kind of almost marketing, um, hospital, healthcare, uh, retail, supply chain. Um, I came up with a higher education, energy, and hospitality. That's it. Yeah. So 12 of them. Um, so then the trick was, uh, if I could find publicly available data, I'd use it. So like the consumer complaints data, they have a website. You can go download actual complaint data. And I found the an energy data set. It was solar energy. And I found a supply chain data set. Um, but for the other nine, I was on my own. Um, in that process, I had discovered a website called Makaroo. Um, if you're unfamiliar, it's a website that you can create data sets. And generally... At least I got the impression that that was for like web designers and app creators to test like parsing logic to make sure that their apps were going to work and not break when it started looking at data entry. Um, but for a few of us, we decided to start developing quick data sets with it. And that's what I did. Um, so for each subject area, I kind of started to do a lot of Googling and figuring out what the fields would be like maybe what some of the KPIs are, because while I've worked in a lot of different industries, I haven't worked in all of the industries. Um, so the research was important. And while uh, I will readily admit what I came up with was probably not super realistic, it was real enough to fake it. Um, so I did a lot of image searches, like for other dashboards, like that you know, a lot of vendors might put up examples or whatnot, and I just kind of use those as references. Um, <clears throat> and then I went, created the data set in Makaroo, downloaded it, and tried to do some basic exploration in Tableau just to make sure that it made sense. If it didn't, I went back, modified the data set. Maybe I added um, some things to try and make it interesting. Um, and then lastly, if I needed to, I'd grab Tableau Prep and do any kind of final modifications to the data set. Like consumer complaints is a good example because it's real data and I didn't wanna like throw some banks under the bus. So I took three or four different banks and like married them all together and it became Cumulus Financial. Um, I did find that Makaroo was a great tool. Uh, if you're looking to do some like sample data, um, definitely check it out. It's free. 
um, the annual subscription, if you want to pay for one that gives you like larger row counts uh, is pretty reasonable. Um, they do have forums, like if you've got questions, but um, if you, uh, and speaking of forums, if you want to like use Mockaroo, like you can completely mock up your data structure and put fake data in there. And you can actually attach that to your workbooks for the forums uh, to help you get your questions answered. So just as a side note. Um, so I had uh, started to hype up the project prior to the first data set launching. And I had a couple of people interested, which I thought was good. Um, I wasn't shooting for the moon. I didn't expect this to become like a makeover Monday level, like participation. I honestly thought if I got like five dashboards per data set, I was gonna be pretty happy. Um, and honestly, I was, I was happy. Like looking back, I got on most of the data sets, I got quite a few entries, which was cool. And honestly, one of the coolest parts for me was the fact that the people that were participating were not what I would call the usual suspects. So the folks that are super engaged in the community who are doing Makeover Monday or Workout Wednesday on a regular basis, and then the names that you see in the dashboards that you see, uh, you know, whose work is just phenomenal. What I was seeing was a bunch of new people, which I thought was really cool. Um, you know, it, the extra side note is just kind of widening the data fam and, and brought some new people into light, which I was didn't expect to do, but I was really happy it did. Um, and to like, there were some really amazing dashboards that did get built. Um, but, you know, the, the other thing I noticed that it was truly a global project. Like I had a lot of participants from India, um, the UK and, and the rest of Europe. Um, I think I had a couple from Australia and a few from the U S so it was, it was really good that it was kind of had this global appeal. I was really, really happy with that. Um, so let's think if I were, I were to do it all over again. Um, and like I said, there, there's a slight chance I might, um, here's some things that I would do differently. Um, I would try to make the fake data sets more real. Um, Makaru is great, but it is a random data generator. Um, so there's really no story to discover. So I almost want to like embed a story that people can find. Um, I think the dashboards would be more interesting, um, even if it like bore some fake insight, right? So um, right now the dashboards that are out there are templates, which are great, um, you know, cause that was the goal. I wanted templates that could inspire people on what their business dashboards might look like. Um, the goal was never to find insights and in fake data. It was just examples. Um, but the analyst in me is like, it would be really cool if there was something to trip over and find. Um, or maybe the season starts with a challenge question, you know, for each data set. So something to think about. I think that would actually add a little bit more participation if there was actually a, a challenge around find, you know, this particular insight or what is this question. Um, the second thing I learned is I've got to stay in the mainstream. Um, and that is like some of the data sets only had one or two entries and that's cool, but um, doing more con common departments and industries would probably yield more participation like throughout the entire projects um, because things like banking and insur insurance, um, human resources, those things had tons of entries where solar energy, supply chain, like those, like they really, missed the mark and I only got like one or two entries. Um, and the last thing, I think I'm gonna, I wanna find a partner. Um, to be fair, I had plenty of people actually tell me to get a partner, but I was like, oh, it's cool, I got this. Um, but sharing the load would have been good and it would have been probably a little bit more fun, honestly. Um, not that it wasn't fun watching the project go and grow, um, but the community is more than one person, right? Um, I think the coolest thing is like now that it's done, like the 12 data sets are out, like I can go out to Tableau Public and if I search for RWFD, uh, there's currently over 300 visualizations that have that hashtag, which I was like, before those things weren't there. So without the project, we wouldn't have all of these examples of, of potential industry uh, examples. So um, I guess that's that's the lasting legacy of, of season one of real world fake data. Um, and that's it. That's kind of the retrospective. So like, I'd love to answer any questions about it and uh, just go from there. Yeah. And 
we have time for questions. So if, if anyone has any, feel free to come off of mute and ask away. Uh, I will say as people get up the nerve to do so, I really liked real enough to fake it. Mark, you said that <laughs> earlier. That, that made me laugh out loud a little bit. Um, and there was, and I really liked too the idea of embedding a story for people to find. I put in chat, it made me think of a geocaching or Easter eggs. Yeah. You're kind of like making a game out of the whole thing so that there's something there. Yeah. And I think, yeah. I think that's what, what needs to happen is it needs some sort of story to satisfy, not just the creative element, but the, you know, the, the, the curiosity element of finding something in the data. So, so yeah, that's the goal. We'll, we'll figure it out and see if a season two happens. One, one question I have now, after having said that, um, have you given consideration maybe taking real world and just fakeifying it? Like you had mentioned taking the real data that you did have um, and putting banks together into a cumulus financial, but could the community contribute? Could, like, is there a tool that could be used to do a one-to-one -one flip of things and to de-identify stuff? I mean, I would love that if I could convince, like, the, but the chances of me convincing a company to give up their human resources data <laughs> would be kind of questionable. Yeah, it's not happening. Um, but like, I, I had an idea because like we have, Tableau has starter dashboards, like for Salesforce and Marketo mm -hmm. and things like that. And I had the idea if I could pull that data out of the starter dashboards, like I could set that up as season two and we go from industries to platforms. Um, I could pull the Salesforce one, but it's like super extensive, like it's huge. Um, and then the other ones, the data's there, but I can't, I can't pull it out of the uh, compressed file for some reason. Like it, it's telling me to refresh the extract. So, so I got to find another, another way to get the data. So if anybody's got ideas or, or wants to contribute, let me know. I've got a question, Mark. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would love to collaborate with you on an Iron Quest. So bring back real world fake data for Iron Quest. I like um, that. Because I mean, we did a business dashboard round. I think it was like the second Iron Quest we ever did. So it was right at the very beginning. And I think most people were like, oh, I do business dashboards all day long. Like, why do I want to do another one? And it wasn't, it wasn't like super focused on different industries like yours was, um, so, which I think is way more effective. So um, if there's, if there's like a, something that you're burning to do then we should definitely link up and see okay. what we can do with yeah. that I, I like that idea yeah cool um, but no well mark, done it's been a great project it's been awesome to see mark this is jim I, i've got an idea we we ought to talk i see an awful lot of data sets come in that have fake data in it. okay and if we can if we can just uh classify some of those maybe i can pull some of those aside and then you can gentrify where you can you can merge some of those together and even make the data more fake. Yeah. I have been yeah. I have been known to borrow somebody else's data too. So <laughs> yeah, I, I would honestly I would love to to launch a second season. Um yeah, you know, maybe after the summer's over. So yeah, let's let's chat and and see what we can okay. find. Okay. Hey thank you for doing this. Really yeah no it. my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Hey Mark, I'm not sure if you answered this. What uh what week was your favorite? What week was my favorite? Um, there was, like there was some really great entries that came through um, in the early half. Um, I want to say I saw some really cool things in the human resources set, um, and also in the insurance data set. And the insurance data set, the one that really stood out to me was uh, one by Will Sutton, who set it up as a presentation in Tableau public, like if you go out and find his, um, like you, he used the, um, the story feature and it, you could like page through like you're presenting like insurance findings. So it was a really cool example of not only like a fake data set for insurance, but how to use Tableau to present data rather than exporting in a PowerPoint. When, I don't know if this helps or unlocks some ideas for you, Mark. Um, one thing I've done to, to demonstrate what I might do for a client would be just to swap out the dimension or fake out the dimension. So maybe if I made it for say a financial client, 
I could just swap it for instead of um, customer name, just change customer name to hospital name, you know, and or uh, patient name or something, you know, and it looks the same and it might be a whole nother way of presenting it, but a name is a name, right? Yeah. A, a industry or category is a category and a ratio is a ratio. So if you just label it different, you might be able to get away with a lot. Yeah, the, the trick is getting those initial data sets, right? Um, so it's, it's, that's, that's the tough part. Sure. So if anybody wants to donate a data set, let me know. This might be on the gray side, but uh, as many people are being hacked with uh, the crypto malware and they're getting their data sets published, uh, <laughs> the dark probably, web may be a source. I don't know if I want to encourage that kind of behavior. Well, I mean, you can anonymize it after that, but it would That's, be the world data. Yeah. With. <clears throat> All right. Well, any more questions before we go on ahead of, of schedule a little bit? Appreciate your work and, and sharing it, Mark. Yeah, no, thank you. Done a lot of good. All right. Share the screen. Next up is trivia time. Yay. So there is a prize. We we have as a group a $30 gift certificate to, to where, Jim? The gift card to, to Tableau shop or the e-learning or what? It's a uh, Tableau gift card. Tableau gift card. For swag. Okay, so the online Tableau swag shop. Got it. It's a, it's so a swag shop. Get, get on the site and do your best. If as you see on the screen, if you go to www.kahoot.it, you know, Kahoot it, and then put in that game pin, what is that, like seven digits? You will be put on the roster to to play and compete. I know I'm not eligible, but I want to play. <laughs> oh, go ahead and play. Uh, why not? Most of these were taken, if anybody's not eligible, eligible, it's Jim, because these are taken from his uh, Zero to Zen presentation. Ah. Not, He's, not Jim's fair, already, Eric. Yeah, I was, I was going to join, but for some reason, the page won't load for me, maybe because I have 700 tabs open. <laughs> memory. <laughs> So don't wait for me. I'm not sure I'm waiting. It's, is it starting? Game pin, get ready, go. Oh, is, I guess it's on a countdown. Yeah, it, it, the countdown resets after every new person comes in. <laughs> Tempting. Right, there we go. All right, the Nashville June quiz. First one is easy. Which tug meeting type do you prefer, virtual or in person? There is a wrong answer here. No, I'm not, not really. <laughs> no wrong answers on this one. This is a freebie. Gives everybody a little bit of time to figure out how this works. But as soon as everybody answers, it'll move on. Before the, uh, but the D variant came out, I was really excited about getting back in person. So. All right, Mark for fun, answered the quickest. Which is not used on the data source tab? Extract, blend, join, or union? Could have been a contender. Ah. <laughs> well, somebody complained about them being too hard last time. It's actually blend, yes. So, not that 
Jim, zero to Zen is easy by that means. I just, how many layers are in Tableau's order of operations? Yeah, this is from one of Jim's presentations. So you can blame him for question. the answer if you, if you uh, want to argue that. It's all of them. The answer is all of them. All of them. <laughs> all, right. all the layers. <laughs> Which is not one of the four basic calculation types. Table calculations, analytics, simple, or LODs. I can't spell calculations, evidently. Calculations. All right. And the correct answer is analytics. It's not one of the basic. All right, Kaz is in the lead. He's on fire. Which adds a classification layer to your data? Sets, parameters, actions, or filters? There's another typo, Eric. Parameters. There'd be more if I had done this quiz, so don't. <laughs> I'm, I'm grateful. Yeah, you get the gist. All right. Kaz is still in the lead. Kaz is killing it. Parameters are not multi-valued, single-valued, dynamic, or global. It's an attractive dashboard. Yeah. I think I got that off Tableau Public. You did. It's uh, someone from the Information Lab. I think her name's uh, Ellen. Multi-value. Yep. There you go. Kaz is still killing it. And which are new features in Tableau Desktop 21.2? Multi-value. You can select multiple items here. So. In Tableau Desktop 21.2. And collections are new to 21.2, but they're not in desktop. They're only in server. So there's your answer. All right. Kaz still took the lead. Good job there, buddy. So if you will get Jim your email address, then he will share that with you. That's going to end that. And I will end the sharing. Kaz, if you just send your email over to a uh, to me in the private chat, uh, I'll take care of it. We'll get it up to you tomorrow. All right. Okay. Thanks, Eric. You're well welcome, done, everyone. Uh, especially Kaz. Next up, we just completed trivia. We are going into sports data with Kate Brown using Tableau Prep. Looking forward to this one. Kate, take it away. All right. Hello, everyone. So let me share Hello. my screen. And all right. So I'm going to talk about a little bit about Sports Viz Sunday because I've got an opportunity to plug um, a community project that I help run. And then we are going to jump into Tableau Prep and I'm going to walk through a portion of a flow that I'm building um, for my Iron Viz that I had kind of scrapped. But after listening to Sarah, I'm going to plow through it and get it done um, tonight. So I'm a little inspired by Sarah's talk. Um, so just a little bit about me. I'm a business support and analytics manager. I live just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. Um, there's my contact info. Feel free to get in touch with me. If you ever have a question about prep, more than happy to answer it. I think um, I get more prep questions than desktop, um, but I love prep. I've got this weird love of messy data and trying to figure out how to make sense of it. Um, I love to travel and cannot wait um, until I can travel internationally again. Um, and that's just a picture of me walking down Dune Angus on Inishmore, one of the Aran Islands. Can't wait to get back there. And then if you do follow me on Twitter, you know um, I love golf. I think I tweet about golf more than I do uh, Tableau. 
And I've also got a new Sharpay puppy who's about 14 weeks old and luckily is sleeping right now. So she won't be in here biting my toes during the presentation. So I am one of the co-leads of um, Sports Viz Sunday and Sports Viz Sunday is really the intersection of data and sports. And for someone like me, you know, really what's better than that? Two of my favorite uh, things to do. So each month we curate a data set and we share that and ask the community to analyze and visualize that data. Uh, the community shares those visualizations on Twitter um, using the hashtag Sports Viz Sunday. We also love to see any um, sports related visualizations that aren't part of Sports Biz Sunday. And we're also tool agnostic. So if you use Power BI or if you use um, ThoughtSpot or you use Excel um, or if you do any visualizations, you know, um, through Python or R through some of those packages, we love to see everything. Um, so feel free if it's not Tableau, don't worry about it. You can still tag us with it. Um, and each week we do a blog roundup of visualizations that we saw that caught our eye either on Twitter or LinkedIn or somewhere else that we're looking at seeing that. And we also do a monthly roundup um, of the challenge for the monthly challenge. Um, another great thing is if you're looking for data sets to you know, visualize and play around with you know, concepts and you don't wanna use work data, all of our data sets are out on our website. So feel free to go out there and poke around um, and you know, download any of those data sets. If you're a football um, person, there's a ton of football, American football, I guess I should clarify. There's a ton of great data sets out there um, that we had from our guest hosts in February. So I definitely recommend taking a look at that. I think there was like draft data um, and a ton of information out there. So take a look at that. And then what are we gonna look at today? So today what we're gonna look at is I love golf. Um, and I'm working on a viz that I'm going to try and, and finish out for Iron Viz that compares the prices of the top 30 public golf courses in the United States versus the price for the top 30 municipal golf courses in the United States. So both are public golf courses. Municipal just means it's um, city or municipality or town owned. Um, and they tend to be a little bit less expensive um, than what uh, Golf Digest picked as their top 30. So uh, Golf Digest usually ranks the top 100. I just pick 30 out of that and I'm gonna compare those. So the prep flow that we'll look at, and I'm actually gonna build out a portion of that flow um, in a couple of minutes so you can see it is really multiple cleaning steps, pivots, aggregates. I'll walk through that and kind of talk through some of the method behind my madness to clean the data. And if you're interested in getting a copy of the flow or you have any prep questions, you know, feel free to hit me up, you DM me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, or shoot me over an email and more than happy to answer any Sports Viz Sunday or prep questions. All right, and now we are gonna jump into what seemingly is um, a somewhat clean data set that's a little bit messy. So I've already built out a portion of this um, I'm connecting to an Excel file here. And if we look um, here, this is gonna be my input. Um, so for you, those of you who haven't seen Tableau Prep, um, Prep is really Tableau's tool that you can connect to multiple different types of data sources, bring it in, aggregate it, clean it, manipulate it, and you're not impacting your source data. Um, but if there are things that you need to tweak, um, data that you need to join together, uh, you don't have access to a data warehouse. All you've got is Excel files or CSVs that someone sends you. You can combine this in here. You can combine uh, disparate data sets. So um, at one point in time in my career, I was working with SQL Server, Teradata, and Oracle. And I needed to mash all of those up. And I didn't have right access to any data warehouse. Um, so prep really was a lifesaver for me. So I've got two different imports, um, inputs from my Excel file. The first one is the top 30 public courses for 2020 um, as rated by Golf Digest. And then Golf Magazine rated the top 30 municipal courses. Um, so when we look at the data set, um, you're gonna see up here is gonna be my flow, uh, my flow panel. This is gonna be my profile pane. And then here's my data. So if I wanna look at Pebble Beach right here, I can see, okay, um, Pebble Beach was rated number one. It's in Monterey, Pennsylvania, uh, Monterey, California. 
and the green fee is uh, or the green fee is five hundred and seventy five dollars. And this is Pebble Beach's website. So what this fee is giving me is essentially um, when I pulled out the fees from each one of the websites, I said, what's the most that I'm going to pay um, if I'm going to play Pebble Beach? So what I want to do is I want to parse out uh, the ranking from the course name. And then I also want to know overall, what's my most expensive, what's my least expensive, and then what's my median rate for this. So in prep, what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect here. Um, so this is just my initial one. So you can see what the data looks like before I manipulate it. And then this one, I'm going to just talk through the calculated fields that I've done. And then the Muni one's a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to build those on the fly. Um, so in prep over here, you can see I've got 22 changes. So if I expand this out, what you're going to see are all of the changes that I made. So I'm just going to pop back over here really quickly. So in prep, you're going to see this little, um, this little light bulb. And if you click on that, that's going to give you a recommendation. And what it's going to do is it's going to read the field and say, OK, I think that this, is, this should be a URL based off of what I'm seeing in the data. And you can choose to accept that recommendation. So my first step over here is really where I did that. I accepted that recommendation, and it changed it to a URL. The next thing that I want to do is I want to split out my, um, my course ranking from the course name and the location. And if I pop over here again, you're going to see that recommendation. And when I click on that, I'm going to, I looked at it and I said, yeah, you know, that recommendation will work. It's going to parse off the ranking and then it's going to leave me the course name and the location in one field. And then I can just split that. So now what gets interesting is I want to split out um, that name. So here is going to split out um, this right here. And that's going to split that. Sorry, just getting down here. And this right here is splitting out. So now what I've got is my course name and my location. And what I can do is I can go ahead and I can split that again. Um, actually, what I did, sorry, what I did here is I re removed this. Um, I removed all of my punctuation. So you knew that from over here, we've got a hashtag in front of that or a number sign if you're old school. Um, so when I come over here and I remove that, it's going to leave me with just the number field. And then to change a data type, you can just click up here and I can pick, I want to change that to a whole number, which is what I'm going to do in this step right here. So then I've got that. And now I've got my ranking split to the way that I want it. And I'm going to be able to remove this field now. So this step right here, I don't need this course field anymore. I've split off my course in my location and I've split off my ranking. So I just remove that by hitting, um, selecting it, right click and remove. And then to rename this, all I have to do is double click into the field and I can rename it and call it public, uh, public rank. And then what I wanted to do here was I wanted to split off and I thought that this was a hyphen, but initially when I split it, there's a dash and a hyphen in some of these. So it sort of freaked out a little bit. Um, so I had to do a replace function. So if you're you know, familiar with desktop, you can do very similar calculations in prep. So I'm just going to replace what they look similar. They're not. Um, this is the dash, and then that's the hyphen. And then when I uh, replace that, then what I can do is I can split that. Now, when I did it initially, what I also found was that there was a course that had an extra hyphen in it. So I think that if we go to right here, um, you can see that this course name has a little hyphen here. So after I initially split it, I had to go back and remove that. And really, the easiest way to do this is to edit the value, put your mouse in there, and then just backspace that out. And then that will be right here. And what that's going to look like is it's going to look like a group. So if you're familiar with grouping in desktop, you can do um, grouping in prep as well. Um, and what you're going to see is that little paper clip. And when I click on it, it's going to show me what's been grouped. And this little red dot 
is going to indicate that that value isn't present in my data set. That's a value that I created, which makes sense, right? Because I just edited the value and got rid of that little hyphen there. So I'm going to kind of go through this part quickly so we can get to um, the little more complicated part um, and spend a little bit more time on that. So now that I've got that kind of cleaned up, what I can do is then go through and split on the hyphen. I can rename my fields, everything splits right. I can call this my public rank, my public course name, um, my location. So I can rename that to my location. And then I can remove fields that I don't need. So I can remove all of the split fields that I'm not using. Um, I can rename my greens fee to public fee. And I'm doing this because I know that I want to join up to um, the municipal data. And I want to be able to separate and understand, OK, this is um, the fee for my public data set. This is the fee for my municipal data set. So a personal preference of mine for what I'm doing for here is that I want to rename these fields to indicate where it comes from. And then what I want to know is I want to know what my highest fee is um, for the public um, I want to know overall what's the most expensive public course out of the top 30, what's the least expensive, and what's the median. Now, I could add an aggregate step, um, but the problem with that is I can only use this field once. So I would either have to duplicate this two other times to have the aggregate have all three of the, the, the min, the max, and the median, or in prep now, we can use um, level of detail calculations. So I opted to do a level of detail calculation here. And the way that you would do this is the three dots is really going to be a pretty powerful menu of where you can do a lot of great things. So if we come down to create calculated field, I can pick fixed LOD. And if you haven't used prep before, this is the coolest thing because it really helps you build the LOD. You don't have to do anything. It's point and click. So I can say, OK, this is going to be my min public fee, and then I can rename this. I can also do this again, pick my max, and pick my median. I love this. It's great. You don't have to worry about, you know, did I get this right or not? It's going to do it for you. Um, if there was something that I wanted to group by, just like if you're doing fixed, and then you do your dimension that you want to fix it on, you can do that by the, the group by drop down. And then I've got these three fields right here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, a field that's just a bogus field for a join. Because what I'm going to do here is these fees are going to be um, repeated right for every row because it's going to show up um, for all of these rows. I don't need this in my detail section, but I want to have a separate data source that's got um, you know, the min, the max, and the median for both the public and municipal. So I just created a branch here um, that's got those, those fields in a group by with my join field. I know that I'm going to do this in my muni step as well, and that I don't really have a field to join these on. So if I just create a bogus field called join and put a one in there, when I get to the point in the muni, I can join those on that one field. So this is really um, it for the public. So I've got this branch for that, um, for the, the min, the max. And then up here, what I've got is I've got um, my overall. All right. And then we're going to look at our muni one, which is a little bit more convoluted. So if we look at this fees field, um, it's pretty messy, right? So we've got different types of fees. We've got you know, 52 to, 40, to 62 non-members, 31 to 41 for members. What I really want to know out of this is what's the most that I would pay to play this course? Pretend I'm not a resident, I'm not a card holder, I'm just a nobody, I want to play this course, what is it? Add to the complication, we've got um, a couple of courses that do this on-demand pricing. Um, so if you're a golfer, this was kind of new to me. Um, and it's really, if you want to play during a prime time, you're going to pay more, which is an interesting concept. But it doesn't help me because I don't know what your fee is. Um, so I looked up on their websites to get an idea of if I was going to book a Saturday morning, you know, midsummer, what would I be paying? And I added this field called fee notes to populate that. But what I want to do is replace this 
with one of these values. So the first thing that I'm going to do is um, tackle this step. So I'm going to create a calculated field. And one of the other cool things in prep is I can name a field the same thing. So I'm going to call this field fees. And it's just going to replace the fees field that I have right now. So what I want to do is I want to say if, and I want to do if it contains. So very similar. If you've never used prep, your calculations are very similar. So we're going to say if it contains on demand, right? Then give me my fee notes. Else, give me fees and end. Now, what I also need to do, this is going to error. My fee notes is a number. My fees is a string. So then I'm just going to cast that as a string. All right. And then we've got, oh, what did I do wrong here? Oh, fee notes. Conflicting expect. Uh, do you have the right way to end the contains function? Is that still a I print? Do. Yeah, let me do this again. So I swear this works. Okay, if contains fees, right? Then if fees contains on demand, demand. Love a live demo, right? You're good. Okay. Then let me fee notes. And we're going to do that as a string. Else fees. And all right. So I obviously made a typo somewhere. All right. So now we've got that fee set. I'm going to get rid of designer because we don't have that in our public set, although that would be nice to know. And now we're going to get a little crazy and tackle this. So if we look at this, I can see that um, for a lot of these, I've got four different fees. I can see that my resident and whatever for the ones that have it are going to be separated by a semicolon. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a custom split. We're going to split it on the semicolon. We're going to split all of these. And now I've got two splits. And now I've got to split each one of these again. Um, and I think that, actually, I think that I'm going to have an issue with the, um, the hyphen in this one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create another calculated field. And we're going to call this fees again. And I'm going to replace. And I've got my hyphen here. And we'll do that like that. OK, and save that. And now we'll do our split. So we'll custom split again. We'll do it off the semicolon, and we'll do all. And then we're going to split this again. And we're going to split it on the hyphen. And we're going to split all. And we're going to come over here. I don't need this, so I'm going to remove this. And then I'm going to come back here, and we're going to do another custom split. We're going to split off the hyphen. Oop, that's the one I just split. Sorry. We're going to go to sp split here, custom split, hyphen. And we're going to split all. OK, so now I'm going to get rid of these two. I'm going to um, multi-select them and then remove them. And now I've got some chaos still, right? So here it looks like I'm OK. Um, I've got you know a dollar sign, which I don't necessarily want because it is a string field. I'm going to want it to be a number. This still has you know my, um, my location or any sort of, you know, um, justification of why your, your fee is going to be cheaper or classification on that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to, I could split this again, but what I want to do is I'm going to come back to my three dots. I'm going to go to clean 
and we're going to remove letters, um, which is awesome, right? Just get rid of all of those letters. Now, what I don't want to do is I've got an option where I could clean and remove punctuation, but I've got this one that's 3450, right? So uh, if I remove that, that's going to make it, you know, $3,450, which is insanity. No one would pay that for a municipal course. Um, so I'm going to leave that alone now. I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to do the same thing here where I'm going to clean, uh, remove the letters and we'll remove letters again one more time. What I would love is if you could multi-select these and apply the same clean step, it would have saved me you know, a few mouse clicks where I could just click all of those and do a remove letter. Um, but I haven't seen that yet, but there is an open ID on the forums. Um, so we can right click now, we can get rid of fees, we can get rid of fee notes. We don't need this anymore. Um, thanks for the recommendation. Okay, and then the next thing that I need to do is really just parse out my ranking here. So again, another split, and we can just split it off of the period, split all the fields, get rid of course, and then I'll call this my ranking, and we'll call this municipal course. Oops. Mark, if you can do something about spell check, that would be awesome. Oh, I'll get right on it. <laughs> I do like that it tells me that I'm spelling it wrong in here, but I wish it would autocorrect for me. <laughs> All right. So now um, what I want to do is, again, I just want the maximum fee for this. So I'm going to add another clean step in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep my course name and I'm going to keep all these crazy fee, fee fields. So I'm going to select them all. I'm going to right click and keep only. And then I'm going to reshape these. Um, so I've got one column with all the fields, uh, with all the fees. So I'm going to create a pivot. Uh, the first time I used prep, I was so confused. I thought like pivot, pivot table. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this? A pivot's really just reshaping your data. And so what we want to do is move our columns to rows. So we have one column with all the fees. I can multi-select these and just bring them over here. And now what you're going to see is all of my fees are together. Um, I don't need this field. Um, what's kind of cool is I can still do some calculations um, and some cleaning even within the pivot step. So I can just right click and remove this. And then here, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna create another replace field. I could have done replace before, but I only have to do one replace calculation here versus I had to do four of them in the earlier step. So let's just create a, a calculated field and we'll call this municipal. And we'll do a replace. And we're going to replace our, our dollar sign, nothing. And then we're just going to do a couple of nested replaces. I didn't know about the nested replace for a long time. Um, and when I discovered, I was like, how did I not know that? And let's do one more, um, and it's for the comma. All right. My screen's a little small. You're replacing the dollar sign, the comma, and what else? Uh, a, a colon, a comma, and a dollar sign. Thank you. No problem. And then, We've got a recommendation here. What's our recommendation? Yep, go right ahead and clean all those extra spaces for me. And then we can get rid of our um, blank fees so we can exclude that. And we don't need our fee split anymore. Okay, so now we've got our, our fee set. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another branch here. 
And I'm gonna just get rid of all of these fee fields because we've already got those. And then what I can do is join this back. And then I'm gonna just join these on the course name. And now I've got a cleaned set. And now what it can do is some more manipulations, right? So similar to how up here we did those fixed calculations. So now what I can do is come back over here and we can do our fixed LOD. And I can say, okay, what is what is, oh, you know what? I've got to change this, right? So let's undo that. My uh, municipal fee has to be a number, not a text field. So let's get rid of that LOD. And we're going to change this to a number. And we'll change this to a number. And now what we can do is do a fixed calculation. So let's create a calculated field and fixed. And we can see what is our um, lowest. Yes. It's municipal. That's pretty cool. One of the top 30 courses, municipal courses in the country you can play for $15. That's crazy. And if anyone's a golfer, you know that that's crazy. And we'll just do that same thing for the max. And to do that, we're just gonna change this to max. For time, I'm just gonna call it Muni. We doing all right on time? Yeah, thereabouts. Um okay. I'm just about done, so. And we'll we're create. doing great. Okay, awesome. And then we'll create this as our median. And I'll do this as uni median. And then similar to up here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just create that aggregate. And we'll take our highest, our lowest, and our median. Who is, oh, I need my join step, right? Because we need a field to join on. So I'll just call that join. We'll do one. And now what we can do is join these together. The join panel in prep, if you haven't used it, is awesome. Um, so I've used this to actually teach um, SQL to people and we start in prep um, to look and see, you know, let me just add this back here because we need it in our aggregate. If we had fallout here, you can play around with the, the inner, you know, this is the difference between an inner, a left join and a right join within your data set. And what you would see is any sort of fallout here. Um, and you can look at just your mismatch values. So it's great if you're prototyping a data set that you're not familiar with and you're trying to figure out, you know, what kind of join do I want to do? Um, I'm working now um, and I dump it into prep and then that gives me an idea of, okay, really what's my follow and is that normal fallout or not? Um, I also use it when I mentor people to teach them SQL is to come in here because the visual representation of it is a lot easier for folks to grasp um, than just looking at running multiple queries in SQL to seeing what falls out. So now I've got um, this finalized set here where I can compare, you know, what are these fees? What's the difference between these? Um, I'll clean it up, get rid of some of my join fields. Um, and then if I add on another clean step here and I just get rid of these fees here, I can get rid of my join and I've got my rank. Then what I can do is what I really wanna do is I wanna compare the number one muni against the number one public. So again, I can dra drag this up here, join these together. 
I'm going to join it on the rank. So it guessed here of what I want to join and it guessed correctly. And now I've got a data set that combines both of these. Um, and so I can do a little bit more cleaning, a little bit more massaging of this data, and then I can bring it together and really do that comparison, right? So if we look here, um, so let's just look at Beth Page Black. I've got some clean, I've got some little weird stuff going on here, but um, just bear with me a little bit because I kind of rushed through this. But what we can see is, um, what are they? Yeah, this, there's something super wrong with this one. Um, let me just bring up this one. Got to love a, de a live demo, right? So if I come back over here, You'll see that's my fees. I've got some fee differences, but down here um, in my details. So we'll look at, so let's look at our number one ranked course, right? So you can pay, play Beth Page Black for 150 or you can pay 575 to play Pebble Beach. So it's a difference of $425. And if we look at, the most expensive so I can also rank the fee difference. So what course um, has the biggest difference? So if we look at it, the number 11 course for the municipal is $77 and the number 11 course um, for uh, the public is TP Sog TPC Sawgrass for $600. So a savings of $523, you know, I'm not made of unlimited money. I'm probably going to play the Muni before I'm going to play TPC Sawgrass if I'm paying for it. Um, so a little bit of a, you know, a, a rush through a little bit of this, but uh, if you'd like to get a copy of this final flow or if you have any questions, um, please let me know because I'm more than happy to talk through it. I, I kind of love this stuff. Um, I have this weird passion for it. So, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any questions or want a copy of the flow. And this is kind of a sneak peek onto that iron viz that I need to get done. Um, hopefully I can finish that out tonight. So I'll stop there, see if there's any questions. And thank everyone for bearing through me with the, the live demo. Worries, Kate. It's always even if there's little mistakes here and there. There's always it's always better to see it in real time. You know, PowerPoint yeah. slides of clicking through, then click this, then click yeah. that. <laughs> it's not the same as seeing that cursor move and yeah. drawing literally those connections. Uh, we didn't have any chat questions. Does anybody have any questions they'd like to ask, either through chat or verbally? Um, one I have is I wonder what this data would look like if if you did a union instead of a join so that you could do some kind of analysis saying okay pr price per rank right? yep. or something like that just to be able to see what's yeah, the most I, value per dollar you know yep yeah there's a whole there's a few different approaches um for what it is you know I think it all depends on you know, and that's so much of like data prep is really, what do you want to do it? What do you want to do with it? And how do you want to display it in Tableau really kind of defines how you're going to build it. And sometimes that's a lot of practice, you know, like trial and error. Um, even if you kind of plan out what you think you want, you know, what's the chart type that you want and how does it work better to have separate fees, like separate fields for the fee, or does it work better to have you know, the fee in one column with the type of fee. Um, and that's something I played around with a couple of times. Um, I've kind of landed on this for how I want um, my visualizations to come out. Um, not to say that I might not change that tonight at 10 o'clock when I'm working on it. But yeah, you could definitely approach it that way as well. Sure. I like really wanted to get that difference. Um, and I felt like if I had them together, it was easier for me to subtract the columns and then rank the difference. Mm -hmm. um, but I did think about doing it with the union. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think the way you did it to get the difference definitely was the best approach. Uh, there's, let's see, there is a question that came in. Is to get this data, did you use a web scraper or 
What did you use? So for this one, um, I I didn't really because I tried to use, um, I won't say there's another tool. There's another tool that has a really great web scraping um, option for people who don't know Python. Um, and I didn't use it for this. I used it for another idea I had. Um, this I really just copied and pasted uh, because when I went to do the web scraping, it just wasn't working for me. And then I also had to look up some of the fees manually because not all of the fees were listed. Um, so I had to go out to the websites and grab them. So um, combination of copy and paste and manual lookup. Gotcha. Yep. Um, but I have used web scraping for other golf data. Um, if you're interested mm -hmm. in the other tool and you don't know Python ping me and I will, I will give you that info. Mm -hmm. Or if you've seen me on Twitter, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> You can expect it's all tricks. Private. Just just say all tricks. No, fine. it's not all tricks. Oh, it's not. Oh. No, nope, I don't have an all tricks license. All oh, tricks not is, anymore. Oh, nope. I know you used it's, to. I used to, but it's um, my group couldn't justify the cost of it, so not yeah. all tricks. Okay. It's a free tool. Well, sort of free. Free, why, of free for most people. <laughs> why are you being coy? Can't you just tell us? <laughs> well, I can. Yeah, it's a Power Query in Excel. Oh, okay. Yeah. They have no Power Query to that. Okay. Yeah, cool. it's pretty cool. Yeah, we know it exists. That's fine. <laughs> I would love there to be web scraping in prep. Like when prep gets web scraping, then there's really no need for me to go anywhere. Is that added to the idea list by chance? I don't know. I'm going to have to go check. You should add that. because yeah, I'll just ping Raheem and be like, hey, Raheem. Th there you go. Yeah, we you want, got the inside track. Yeah, we want we want web scraping. Actually, I'll have mm -hmm. Carl bring it up. Carl's got the inside track. So. There you go. <laughs> So Kate, there is a, a question, actually two questions I'm going to merge into one as far as performance and large data sets. Mm -hmm. um, what tricks or recommendations do you have for? Yeah, so if you, if you have the version, um, if you're on the server version where you can do prep in the web, um, uh, you know, prior to my current role um, for a period of time, I worked for an organization that had online and you could do flows in web and I found the performance there was pretty good, um, better than it was on my desktop, right? Because desktop, like when it's on my computer, it's consuming my computer resources. Um, I felt like when I did it there, I didn't run into any issues. I'll also say that even um, within desktop, I feel like uh, the stability of the application. So I've, I've used it since it was beta in Maestro. Um, and the stability is incredible now compared to where it was, you know, that there are a lot of performances and also sampling, um, you know, so make sure that you use sampling. Um, if you're um, connecting to a massive table, you know, from your data warehouse, if you don't know SQL and really you're doing a lot of filtering, uh, you know, in your input pane here to limit what you're looking at find someone who can help you write a query and then connect to the data warehouse and have your data warehouse limit the data that you're bringing in. Um, so those are kind of uh, the, the steps that I've taken and kind of help people with. You know, you don't need to need no SQL to use this, but if you're connecting to a table that's got millions and millions of rows and, you know, a lot of columns and a lot of data, you know, see if you can get someone to help you narrow that down. So what you're bringing in is really just what you need. Right. So another, another good tip, not that anybody ever connects directly to large Excel files, but if you're connecting to a really, really large Excel file, change it to a CSV file, yeah. like yep. save it as a CSV. Cause that way it's not parsing through all the XML to get to the data. Exactly. Yep. That's a great mm -hmm. one, Mark. So Kate, Kate, when I heard you say there is that to the extent that you can reduce the rows or reduce the columns or both, right? On the, at the outset, on the front side. Yeah, if you can do that, right? So if, you know, in your connection pane here, so if you're connecting um, right to a SQL server and you're just bringing, connecting right to that table and you're not filtering anything, you know, if you can have someone help you write a query to just bring in, you know, if you've got, 90 columns in your table and it's got millions of rows and really all you need in your, your data set from that source is maybe a hundred thousand rows and four columns. See if someone can help you kind of limit what you're bringing in. And then that way, you know, you're only working with that, that sample of data or all of the data, if you can whittle that down that you really need. 
some good advice. Any other questions for Kate before we open the okay, phone? Quick question up? for yeah. you. Uh, how much time do you think you spend in prep versus Tableau desktop on a given day? Uh, it, that's a tough question. It varies. <laughs> it depends. Isn't that the standard answer? Right. <laughs> um, so I think it, you know, when I'm working with a new data set um, or I'm working for with data that I'm unfamiliar with, I'm spending a lot of time in prep kind of exploring it and building it. And then really once I build out the flow, you know, I'm not, I'm not in there again, you know, for that flow. Um, and so, you know, and I think it depends on roles. So the job that I had where I didn't have any ability to write anything to a warehouse, I was in prep a lot more than I was in desktop because I really needed a place to kind of like explore this. So some of what I do in prep never ends up in Tableau, right? So um, in that role, especially like I needed to provide just raw data sets to people. Um, and it was too, you know, they, it was nothing that ever was gonna be consumed in Tableau. It was more like, you know, we need these records because we need to do some sort of investigation or we wanna, you know, do something with this. So not having a place that I could combine those, um, I would always jump into prep to do it. You know, I never do a VLOOKUP anymore. Someone asked me how to do one the other day. I'm like, I haven't done a VLOOKUP in years because to me, it's easier to just bring my files in here you know, do the join, see what's missing and go from there. Um, so I do any sort of file comparisons I do in prep now. Um, so I think it really varies and it varies based on my projects. Um, right now, I think I'm a little bit heavier in desktop than I am in prep because I've got that right access to my warehouse. Um, and I'm really creating a lot of sets in the warehouse. So classic non-answer, right? It depends. Yeah. Um, so we, I took a look at the time and we do need to open it up for our community moment and do some announcements. Um, thank so you very we, much. Thank you, Kate. This, this was great. And awesome. I didn't really rhyme that time. Thank you. All right. All right. Jim, you got this community spotlight. You want me to share that PowerPoint? You still with us? We're still seeing Kate's screen. Yeah, Teams um, Zoom is frozen on me, so I might have to to uh, close out. Nick, why don't you just drive the? Uh, why don't you just? Yeah, I'm. I can you can, you can pull up. You can pull up the PowerPoint, and I'll just go with it. Sure. There you go. You see uh, my screen? No, I'm seeing Kate's screen. All right, I'm gonna kill uh, Zoom. Okay. Interesting. It, it seemed to have let me share over her, but like it says, I'm sharing my screen. Do you see it now or no? no I'm not seeing that. It. It's uh... so Kate's screen. Interesting. Yeah, we're still seeing Kate's Kate's screen. Uh, let me change this setting. That's odd because I'm seeing uh, I'm seeing Nick's screen. You are. Who can share? Yeah. Maybe other people's. Uh, Is everybody seeing Nick's screen? Well, I'm seeing community. Now I see Nick's screen. Okay. Nope. Okay. Let's uh, right. let's just run let's just run through this real quick. Uh, I'm just going to keep that healthcare link up on every month because so many are involved in healthcare, and uh, it's a really a great place, uh, a great place to visit. Uh, the only two opportunities that I'm aware of is I know Tableau is still hiring, so I look out at uh, Tableau Careers and see if something there fits you. Uh, and JLL is uh, looking to add uh, Tableau experienced people uh, around the world, and I know that someone here is looking in the uh, Tennessee area to add some JLL people. So if that's of interest to you, go out to the JLL site and uh, see what they have available. Uh, the only really big news this, uh, this month, or at least the big news that I want to highlight here is that 2021.2 uh, dropped this week. 
And uh, you can go out to this link and see what the new features are. And uh, uh, I'll tell you, there are, there are some really big ones. Uh, first, uh, ask data has been expanded uh, for viewers. For those of you who work in the corporate world, check out collections because it's going to make organizing and sharing your workbooks throughout the organization uh, a whole lot easier. It's going to give you much more control than what you've had in the past. And that's a really uh, a really big advance uh, in that uh, in that area. A couple of other things: area calculations and spatial data sets. Um, that's new now, and you're able to write back to BigQuery. But but this was a this was a pretty big uh, uh, introduction. So go out, and check them all out, uh, see what's there that uh, that you would like to uh, that you would like to use. Nick, Eric, are any you uh, aware of other job openings that aren't listed here that uh, might be of interest to the group? Yes, I, I have a link that I'll put in the chat here in a moment when I'm when I'm done sharing okay. uh, for my my employer. Nava Health is hiring an analytics engineer. Okay, so it'd be good to have one of you on my team. Yep. Some is anybody else? <laughs> is anybody else uh, aware of an opening? Okay, Nick, if you go to the next slide, we can talk about next month. Sure. Uh, in July, uh, a couple of our very own are going to talk about the pros and cons of uh, Tableau Online. And I don't want to mention Nick and Brandon by name and put them on the spot, but uh, but they're going to be talking to us next uh, next month. We also had the pleasure of Sarah Badger, is going to come back and talk to us about uh, all the new mapping features uh, next month. And for those of you who saw our presentation, oh, it seems like ages ago, but uh, Sarah is just wonderful and uh, she is known as the uh, map overlords for a reason so uh, i definitely am planning on tuning in and i hope everybody else is also nick that's all i've got today great uh stop the share and yeah um uh, so I'll, I'll work through these links here real quick and put them in the chat for everybody um but that's, that's it. Does, we can also open the floor, though, for any other job opportunities for people or from people. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Hope, hope you got some value out of this. And the last one is my data health opportunity. Um, Come back next month. It'll be the last Wednesday of the month. And I think the time we, we're going back to our 3.30, is that right? Eric, does that sound right? 3.30 Central, you, you were on mute. I think that's right. I don't have my calendar up, but I can tell you in just a moment. Let's see. Yeah, yep, 3.30 on the 28th. Good deal. Well, thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon. All right. Thanks for inviting me. Yeah.